Good morning to you. This live is coming straight to you courtesy of my sister-in-law. You can't see it, but I have got this new cool fan dangly thing that holds my phone and it's got a little ring light above. So now you can see me in HD. Ha! Aren't you lucky? Um, so, actually, it's, it, look, it makes you see all your wrinkles, doesn't it? Sorry about that, everyone. I might have to put my face on before I do my next live. So, um, I really hope you all had a, an amazing Christmas. For those of you who didn't have an amazing Christmas, you made it. You did it, it's done. And you don't have to do it for another year. Um, I know that may sound glib to everyone who had a fantastic Christmas, but not everyone finds it easy. We personally had a really great one this year. We were so lucky that Archie was in a great mood. He managed to sit and eat a main, you know, the main portion of the Christmas dinner. So I dished his up on uh, a separate plate. He had some chicken, he had some roast potatoes, and he had some stuffing balls, and he had some peas. And he ate the lot. He only has a very small portion, but he ate the lot. And then obviously he left. And he spent most of the Christmas day upstairs in his room. And that's because there were 17 of us in this house. Ian and I are really blessed that we've got a big family. We've got parents. We've got aunties, uncles. We've got a beautiful niece. So although that's wonderful, for Archie that is incredibly overwhelming. Um, hi, good morning, Lisa. It's good to see you. I hope you had a lovely Christmas. Um, so he did really well. So uh, the only thing with it is we also had a boxing day yesterday at Grandma's house, which meant that we left quite early. In fact, we left earlier than we would normally do. He was quite overwhelmed, spent a lot of the time on the stairs. He was great. And then when he got home, I didn't see him. He just said, I love you. He went upstairs and he just... Um, he got a keyboard for Christmas, you know, like a little mini piano. And so he just sat with his headphones on and played that for hours. Um, today, we're not doing anything. And this is something I'm advising to you now. That's what this life is about. It's about coping with the overwhelming feeling of Christmas Day. Specifically the presents. I've got a whole link um, to share with you about uh, the overwhelming present side of things. And also the calming down period and that slowing down period after. So for us as a family, we have deliberately taken the choice that today and tomorrow, we are not doing anything. We're not seeing anyone. We haven't invited anyone to our home. It's what we refer to in our house as pajama days. And we do that deliberately because Archie is given so much Christmas day and Boxing Day to try and be sociable, to try and listen to conversations and not be overwhelmed and open all those presents. That's taken everything out of him to do those last two days. So for these two days, we're not doing anything at all. We're literally just slobbing it. We're leaving him alone. The kids are happy because they're playing with their Christmas presents. So it's worked out quite well. So the point of this live, and I won't keep going for long because I know you've all got lots to do and lots of time to spend with your loved ones. Um, but this is about coping with the overwhelming uh, bit about the presents. So I know we all love, don't we, getting lots of presents. It's a wonderful thing, of course it is. But it's also very overwhelming for some children, particularly those with autism, when there's toy after toy after toy after toy, or game after game after game. And it can be quite an overwhelming thing. What do I play first? What do I do first? The room is getting messier. The piles are getting higher. All of that is going to cause a stressful environment, which is then going to cause quite probably a meltdown. And we want to avoid that because we know how to look after our loved ones in a meltdown. But if we can avoid having them, oh my God, that's just so much easier, so much nicer for everyone concerned. So a couple of tips. These are not my tips. I have found them on a, bizarrely enough, Female First magazine. And it's about minimalism. And actually, the, the article was written for people who prefer a minimalist living. You can see, <laughs> we're not minimalist people. Um, but, but the feelings are the same, that overwhelming feeling of what to do with the stuff you've got. And I read it and thought, actually, this applies for my parent carers, and it certainly applies for me. So here are a few tips. And don't share this with people who've given you the gifts, please. Uh, first things first, remember there is no guilt in not keeping everything you have. If there is something that you know your child or you is not going to use or not going to need, you can re-gift it. There's no shame in it. 
there are so many people that want your unwanted gifts, like me at Awesome Archie, like DCF Treehouse at Boscombe. If you've got toys, they are always calling out for toys. If you want to get rid of some old toys to make way for the new, as long as they're working, the Dorset Children's Foundation Treehouse in Boscombe will be so grateful because they almost give them away to their families, which is just so needed. And likewise, anything you want to re-gift, send it to me. I will sell it on, use the money for Awesome Archie to buy Sen equipment. I'm not saying that to make you give me, sounds like an advertising video, doesn't it? But the point is, remember, there's no guilt in re-gifting at all. You don't need to keep things. People buy with love, but you don't have to keep them. Uh, move everything once you've opened it out of sight. So um, it says in the article that if you feel overwhelmed by a big pile of presents, and this is Archie, in your living space, what you need to do is face it and get it done straight away. So that is something that I did do last night. When Archie went to bed, I went in his room and we've deli we've built him a, bed, um, a den under his bed. He's got the smallest bedroom known to man and we couldn't get a like a cabin bed with a den. So we, my husband very cleverly built him one. And what we did is we just gently pushed it all under there and over the next couple of days we'll sort that out. It means when he wakes up, he doesn't see them all straight away. And he can deliberately go underneath to watch them. Hey, Lucy, good morning. I hope you had a lovely Christmas, darling. We're just talking about feeling overwhelmed over Christmas and what we can do about that. Okay? If you, sorry, you can always rewind this once I've finished gabbling on. But it's so lovely to see you. Yeah, so that's the other thing. Move everything out of sight once you've opened it. This can actually reduce the feeling of reduce the feeling of stress and seeing it piled up will only add to your anxiety that's what it says on the article and that's how I feel actually make a list of everything you get and who's it from this is something really I think when you're a parent you tend to do anyway don't you um, and because we've got so many children gone are the days where we actually write lists um, because the list would go on and on and on but I do tend to do, for those parent carers who are busy, we do tend to do a, I don't know what you call it, you know, like a universal thank you card. So I will just have a picture of the kids on Christmas Day. And then on the inside, I will just say, thank you so much for making our Christmas so special. And then that's just such a time saving way of saying thank you rather than having to get the, I mean, again, oh, I can't make Archie right. 10 different notes like getting him to write a sentence in English is traumatic enough so we just we need to be polite we need to say thank you but we can take that stress away we don't need to do it we can thank people for them for them accept that gifting is some people's language of love and this is something that I find really hard because I'm a serial giver I love 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 giving presents I love it because for me, it's like, oh, yes, I love you so much. Have this, have this, have this. Actually, I do that to my husband and my husband hates it. And I know my husband loves me and I know he's grateful, but he's not a person for stuff. He doesn't need stuff. And so it's taken me a long time to realise that actually when I buy him some Christmas socks, Christmas pants, that's actually what he wants. He's just really happy with that. He's not overwhelmed because as we all know, my husband's on the edge. You know, he's, he's he definitely admits himself that he's not neurotypical. And he gets overwhelmed with that need to be over-enthusiastic. Oh my God, thank you, that's amazing. It's awkward. If you don't feel it, if you have autism, it's even harder, isn't it? Because we, we, can't, we can't mask it's all, all day Christmas Day. It's impossibly hard. Um, but again, that comes down to that gratitude. Be thankful as much as you can, as much as you are able. Um, but then if you don't want the gift, re-gift it to someone else. You know, because that's kind. We're not hurting the person's feelings. I think that's okay. So uh, for those of you who have joined us a little bit halfway through, I won't waffle. I'll just give you the pointers. If you're feeling overwhelmed with gift giving, all you need to do is remember that you don't have to keep everything that's gifted to you. If you've got six different sets of the same toiletry kit, there are hundreds of charities like the DCF, like Awesome Archie. Oh, sorry, Pop It, I'm doing a live job. Oh, Colin, come in. Come and say good morning. Say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're in your pyjamas. I won't be five minutes. I'm sorry. I should have told you. Um, 
there are th hundreds of charities that want to take um, things like toiletries. Boscombe Savage and Army need it for the BH1 project. Dorset Children's Foundation always want new or used toys as long as they're in a good condition. You drop them off at the treehouse at Boscombe. They're delighted for it. We at Awesome Archie take pretty much everything except electricals because I will resell it and use that money to buy send equipment in our mainstream schools. Number two, move things out of sight. If you can't face dealing with it and sorting it out properly, the pile of whatever, and I'm going to take this with me in the new year because it's laundry and washing up that gets me, but there are some days that my mental health don't allow me to do it. And do you know what? That's fine. I've got to realise that that's fine. I'm going to hide it. I'm just going to hide it for that day until I'm ready to tackle it. So that's tip two. Same with presents. Mm -hmm. Tip three, make a list. I'm not sure we need to make a list. I think it's just good enough to, to write a universal card to say thank you and accept that people gift differently. Now, Lucy, who is watching, I'm sure she won't mind me sharing this, is the most incredible gifter because she makes things. And she makes the most personal... Um, she finds what you love and she will literally make it out of clay or she'll paint something. I, li genuinely, yeah, well done, Lucy. Um, you can't ever top Lucy's gifts, so you don't just don't try. Um, but yeah, she does that with love. And it's just so important that we recognise that. Because when your child presents you with perhaps a toilet roll that's got string on it to hang on the tree, that matters to them. That's, that's a big deal. And we've got to celebrate that. So, good grief, I've waffled. It's been lovely to have you with me live this morning. Thank you so much. I've got all the ladies today. How lovely. Um, to any of you watching who are re-watching, as always, you can go to our website, www.awesomearchie.co.uk to get any hints, tips, free downloadable resources, all there. We don't charge. Everything we do is gifted because that's it. We're a non-profit. We don't ever take. We only give. Um... And as always, there are YouTube videos on the website. There are links to our YouTube, our Twitter, our Facebook. I will be writing a blog um, at some point over these next couple of days. But as I said, these two days are reserved for Archie and the children, really, where we're just trying to keep things calm and quiet. However, I am still here. If any of you are overwhelmed, if any of you are having trouble, drop me a text. I might not answer the phone because it might not be a good time with my kids, but I will always respond to you. You're not alone. I don't care what you're feeling. Anything you say to me stays private. I've got no interest in sharing personal information, but I might be able to help. And because I know certainly one day I might be calling you when I'm having a bad time myself. So enjoy the rest of your little Christmas break. It's been lovely to have you with me. And I'm going to shut up and go now and eat some mince pies. Because <laughs> I can. Thank you, everybody. See you. Thank you, ladies, for watching live. I really appreciate that. See you guys. Bye.